Casey's story, as it unfolded online, was one of courage and tragedy. Portrayed as a young woman bravely battling leukemia, she captured the hearts of many in the virtual world. Her vivid accounts of her struggles and the inspirational messages she shared created a tapestry of empathy and connection with her followers. People were drawn to her resilience and her apparent openness about her challenging journey, making her a beloved figure in the online community. Except she was nothing more than a digital enigma, a persona who only existed in the pixels and narratives shared across chat rooms and blogs. In a tale that blurs the line between virtual reality and real life deception, the story of Casey Nicole Swenson emerges, captivating and bewildering the online community. In the late 1990s and early 2000s, the burgeoning world of the internet became the stage for a perplexing drama of identity and illusion. Beneath this layer of virtual empathy and connection, however, lay a startling truth. Casey Nicole Swenson was not a real person, but a fabrication, a complex creation of Debbie Swenson, an American woman who wove this intricate web of fiction. The discovery of Casey's true identity sent ripples of shock and disbelief through the online community. The narrative of a young woman's brave fight against illness was replaced by a tale of deceit and manipulation. Debbie Swenson's motives for creating and maintaining the Casey persona were layered and complex. By crafting this fictional identity, she engaged in a form of digital puppetry, manipulating emotions and narratives in a space that was still exploring the boundaries between reality and fiction. The revelation of Casey's non-existence challenged the community's perception of authenticity and trust in the digital realm. Join us as we delve deeper into the enigmatic digital saga of Casey Nicole Swenson. We invite you to be part of this compelling journey as we unravel the complexities behind Casey's creation and the ripple effects it had on those who followed her story. The Beginning the story of Casey Nicole Swenson serves as an early example of the phenomena now commonly known as catfishing, where individuals create false identities on the internet. The origins of Casey Nicole's online persona lie in the imagination of Debbie Swenson, a middle-aged woman from Kansas. Debbie, for reasons only fully known to her, created Casey Nicole as a vibrant young woman battling leukemia and other health issues. Some speculate her motivation may have been a quest for attention, empathy, or perhaps an escape from her own reality. Others suggest it might have been an ill-conceived effort to raise awareness about cancer or to create a narrative that was compelling and engaging to an online audience. Debbie Swenson's portrayal of Casey Nicole was not just a superficial online profile. It was an elaborate, intricate identity complete with backstories, emotional depth, and personal struggles. Debbie, through her creation, tapped into the burgeoning world of online communities and personal blogs, a relatively new phenomenon at the time. Casey's story was chronicled in a blog that detailed her daily life, her struggles with illness, and her philosophical musings about life and death. This blog became a window through which readers connected deeply with Casey's experiences. The initial establishment of Casey's presence on the internet was met with widespread empathy and support, the internet of the early 2000s was a different landscape, with users often forming close-knit communities based on shared interests or experiences. Casey's blog and her story resonated with many. Readers found inspiration in her courage and positive attitude in the face of adversity. Debbie, posing as Casey, interacted with her audience, responding to comments and emails, further solidifying the illusion of her existence. Debbie's deception was sophisticated, she used photos of a family friend to represent Casey and even created other online personas to interact with her. These included Casey's friends and family members, each adding layers of credibility to the narrative. The level of detail and the amount of time invested in maintaining this network of deception was significant. As Casey's story unfolded online, her following grew. People not only read her blog, but also engaged with her through other forms of online communication. This interaction was not limited to messages of support or sharing of experiences. It evolved into genuine emotional connections. People felt they knew Casey, empathized with her, and in many ways considered her a friend or even a family member. However, 
the facade began to crumble when discrepancies in the story and logistical inconsistencies emerged. Questions were raised about the veracity of Casey's existence, leading to investigations by those who were becoming suspicious. These investigations eventually uncovered the truth. Casey Nicole never existed. The real person behind the online persona. So, who was Debbie? In cases like this, where an individual gains notoriety due to a specific incident or action, personal background details such as family and early life often remain private, especially if they are not directly relevant to the incident itself. As such, information about Debbie Swenson's early life, including her birthplace, her parents and siblings, if any, is not widely documented or reported in public sources. What we do know is that before inventing Casey Nicole, Debbie Swenson was a relatively ordinary individual with no notable public profile. She lived in a small town in Kansas and was a wife and mother. Her life, as far as public records and reports suggest, was typical of many living in similar American small town settings. Swenson's background prior to Cole Hoax did not indicate any propensity for the kind of elaborate storytelling and digital deception she would later become known for. There were no public records or reports of her engaging in similar activities before this incident. It appears that the creation of Casey Nicole was a unique and unprecedented venture in her life. Her decision to create and maintain the Casey Nicole persona was a deeply complex and personal action. The reasons behind such a decision remain largely speculative, as Swenson herself has not publicly provided a comprehensive explanation. Possible motivations discussed by observers and psychologists include a desire for attention, the thrill of creating and managing an alternate reality, or perhaps an emotional need that was being fulfilled through this fabrication. The method to her madness. As Casey, her story captivated a growing audience, resonating deeply with people across the internet and explores the nature of the connection she formed. As Casey's narrative unfolded through her blog and other online interactions, she attracted a diverse following. Individuals from various backgrounds, dealing with their own life challenges, found solace, inspiration, and camaraderie in her posts. Casey's portrayal as a young, articulate woman courageously battling leukemia struck a chord with many. Her blog posts, which often blended emotional transparency with philosophical reflections on life, illness, and resilience, were not just read, they were felt. The early 2000s was a time when the internet was burgeoning as a social space. Online communities were more than just platforms for information exchange. They were spaces where people sought and found emotional support. Casey's story offered a narrative that many could empathize with, a battle against a relentless illness, maintaining positivity in the face of adversity and the human experience of pain and hope. Her persona offered a unique blend of vulnerability and strength, making her relatable and inspirational. Readers interacted with Casey's persona through comments, emails, and later, through other emerging forms of online communication. These interactions went beyond casual engagement. They were profound, often involving personal disclosures by followers about their own life struggles. People shared their stories of dealing with illness, either personally or through loved ones, finding a sense of understanding and mutual support in their interaction with Casey. The connections formed were not superficial. For many followers, Casey became an integral part of their daily lives. They looked forward to her posts, worried about her health updates, and celebrated her small victories. When Casey shared her struggles, her followers responded with words of encouragement, advice, and shared grief. This level of engagement and emotional investment is indicative of the powerful bonds that can be formed in online communities. As Casey's following grew, so did the network of connections. Her blog became a hub for people to connect not just with her, but also with each other. It fostered a community of individuals united by shared empathy and collective support. This community extended its influence beyond the digital realm. Followers sometimes organized real-world actions like fundraisers or sent cards and gifts to the address provided by Debbie. However, the depth of these connections also meant that the revelation of Casey's non-existence would later have a profound impact. This brings us to the turning point, the place where discrepancies and doubts began to surface, 
leading to questions about the authenticity of Casey's identity and story. The Investigation The unraveling of the Casey Nicole Swenson saga is a complex narrative marked by growing discrepancies, rising suspicions, and a community-driven investigation that ultimately led to the revelation of one of the earliest and most impactful internet hoaxes. As Casey's story progressed and her following grew, certain inconsistencies began to emerge. Initially subtle, these discrepancies gradually became more noticeable to her attentive and emotionally invested audience. The first signs of suspicion arose from the details in Casey's blog posts and her online interactions. Astute readers noticed inconsistencies in her medical descriptions, treatments, and the progression of her illness. For a community that included individuals with first-hand experience in dealing with serious illnesses, these inconsistencies were not just puzzling, they were alarming. Another red flag was the lack of verifiable information about Casey. In an era where digital footprints were becoming increasingly common, Casey's online presence was curiously limited to her blog and email interactions. There were no news articles, no hospital records, and no physical address that could be confirmed. This absence of corroborating evidence was unusual, especially for a story that was garnering significant attention. The investigation into Casey's existence began informally, with curious followers and skeptical internet users starting to piece together the available information. They scrutinized her blog posts, cross-referenced details, and shared their findings in online forums and discussions. This collective effort was not just driven by curiosity. It was fueled by a sense of responsibility to uncover the truth. One of the critical breakthroughs in the investigation came from the analysis of the photographs of Casey. Tech-savvy followers began to examine these images and it was discovered that they were of a different person entirely. This revelation was a significant turning point as it directly challenged the authenticity of Casey's persona. As the investigation gained momentum, more people joined the effort, including journalists and tech experts. This collective scrutiny brought a new level of sophistication to the investigation. Email headers were analyzed to trace the origins of Casey's communications and domain registration details for her blog were examined. The climax of the investigation occurred when a woman who recognized the photos used for Casey's persona came forward. She revealed that the pictures were actually of her daughter, who was not ill and had no connection to the story being told. This piece of evidence was damning, directly linking Debbie Swenson to the fabrication of Casey's identity. The investigation into Casey Nicole's existence was a watershed moment in the early days of the internet. It showcased the power of community-driven inquiry and the collective desire for truth. However, it also highlighted the vulnerability of online communities to deception. The followers of Casey's story, who had invested their emotions and time, felt a deep sense of betrayal upon learning the truth. The Exposure Casey Nicole Swenson's true identity was ultimately exposed through a combination of investigative efforts by suspicious individuals and key revelations that unraveled the web of deception. Followers began to notice considerable discrepancies. These discrepancies, especially in her medical condition and treatment details, led to increased scrutiny. Members of the online community, including some with medical backgrounds, began to question the authenticity of the information being shared. The descriptions of Casey's medical condition were often vague and lacked the specificity that might be expected in a real-life case. This vagueness led to questions about the authenticity of her illness. Additionally, some of the treatment protocols and procedures described in Casey's blog were inconsistent with standard medical practice for leukemia or the specific type of leukemia she claimed to have. Also alarming, the symptoms and side effects Casey reportedly experienced did not align with those typically associated with leukemia or its treatment. This discrepancy was a red flag for readers familiar with the disease. The timeline of Casey's diagnosis, progression of illness, and treatment often seemed implausible or overly dramatic. Real-life cases of leukemia typically follow a more predictable and gradual course, subject to specific medical protocols. Finally, despite the severity and complexity of her alleged illness, there was no verifiable information about Casey's treatment, such as the hospital where she was being treated 
or the doctors in charge of her care. And when the concrete evidence that the photographs used to represent Casey were actually of a young woman who was neither ill nor aware of her pictures being used in this manner, there was nothing more Debbie could say to keep the story going. Around the same time, internet detectives and journalists started digging deeper. They analyzed the digital trail left by Casey's blog and email correspondences. Technical analysis of these communications led to the tracing of IP addresses, which pointed back to Debbie Swenson, the real person behind Casey Nicole. The absence of a death certificate, as Casey was claimed to have died, further fueled suspicions. Once the evidence began to mount, Debbie Swenson was confronted by journalists and members of the online community. Initially, she denied the allegations, but eventually admitted to creating the Casey Nicole persona. Swenson disclosed that Casey was entirely fictional and that the entire narrative of illness, struggle, and death was fabricated. This confession confirmed the suspicions of the online community and brought to light one of the first notable cases of internet deception. The Aftermath The aftermath of the Casey Nicole Swenson hoax was profound and far-reaching, impacting not only the immediate online community that had followed her story, but also sparking broader discussions about trust, authenticity, and ethics in the digital world. For the online community that had rallied around Casey, the revelation of the hoax was devastating. Many had invested significant emotional energy into following her story, offering support, and sharing their personal experiences. Discovering that Casey was a fabrication by Debbie Swenson was not just a simple case of being misled. It felt like a profound betrayal. The sense of loss was real and palpable, as followers mourned not just the idea of Casey, but also the trust and emotional investment they had placed in her story. In the broader context, the Casey Nicole story was one of the early examples that highlighted the darker aspects of the internet's potential. It served as a cautionary tale about the pitfalls of digital anonymity and the ease with which false identities could be created and maintained. The incident predated the term catfishing, but it embodied many of the same elements that would later come to define this phenomenon. Journalists and media outlets covered the story extensively, using it as a case study to explore the emerging realities of internet culture. It was a clear demonstration of how virtual narratives could have real emotional impacts and the challenges of verifying information in the digital age. For those studying online behavior and digital communities, the Casey Nicole hoax became a subject of interest. It provided insights into how digital personas can be constructed, how online communities form and function, and the psychological aspects of virtual interactions. The incident was analyzed in terms of identity creation, trust building, and the dynamics of online support networks. In the years following the hoax, the story of Casey Nicole continued to be referenced in discussions about internet ethics and digital literacy. It underscored the importance of developing skills to critically evaluate online content and the need for greater awareness of the emotional dynamics of online interactions. Join the conversation. Drop a comment to share your thoughts and insights. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more captivating content. Thanks for tuning in to Really Unreal. Join us next time as we uncover another fascinating case. Stay curious, stay connected. Stay with Really Unreal.